is Jacqueline. I am from Western Maryland and I am a former home ec teacher. My YouTube channel is The Sleepy Bee and you can also find me on Instagram as well as Ravelry as The Sleepy Bee. Um, it's been a couple weeks. That's my goal is every two weeks to post something. Um, so this is my fourth episode. My first episode was an intro. Second episode was talking a little bit about uh, what I like to sew and some of the things that I've made recently and have worn pretty regularly. Um, last post was an instructional and I have a feeling that was a little bit disastrous. I tried to cram way too much information into one sitting and it just, it kind of didn't work. It just kind of didn't work. Um, I did try and break it up into smaller bits so that you could see, you know, the heading of each section, like centered zipper, lapped zipper, everything was very clearly labeled that way if you needed to navigate through it quickly, you could. Um, this week's episode is going to be much, much shorter because again, it's just talking about things that I've made, am making, or I'm going to make. And our next, our next post will be another How Tuesday in which I will show you how to do piping. So with that said, um, you can see that I have a guest here. This is my, my handy dandy dress form. Her name is Athena. She belonged to my grandmother. Um, I have had Athena since I was 14, so it's been about 20 years. Uh, unfortunately, she is very delicate. One of her legs is broken, so I've got her propped up like underneath the trim work in my attic where I'm sitting right now. That's why the scenery is a little different than usual. Um, but she, she has been, she has been a very uh, constant companion in my home ec career and my, my hobby and all that. So uh, I'm kind of just rambling. I don't really have a script laid out for today. Um, anyway, I will be posting this on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., but right now it is Sunday, May 14th, Mother's Day, and it is 8.30 in the morning. It's early. I had to get in here before the light got too harsh. Um, anyway, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the dress that I am currently wearing as well as the dress that Athena is wearing. Um, first... We'll start with the one that I have on. This is my absolute favorite summer dress pattern and I will stand up and show it to you in its entirety. This is, pardon me while I move my chair. This is McCall's number 4444. It does not have pockets. I should have put pockets in it, but I didn't. But I'm not sure how well you can see this. It does have ruching and a band at the bust. It has an empire waist. It has princess seams that flare out from an A, or to form an A from the waist. And then here in the back, we have an invisible zipper, hook and eye closure, and halter, which is secured with two buttons. I have had this dress for probably eight years. I moved here in 2010, it's 2018. Yeah, eight years. This is the first dress that I made, the first garment that I made um, after I moved into my house where I live now. And it has proven to be my absolute favorite. It is fully lined, though um, I did get lazy and I did not hem the lining, so it's still just raggedy. <laughs> it is shorter than the dress itself, so the raggedy bits don't hang out, but still, um, as a home ec teacher and a seamstress with many years of experience, that is an embarrassing admission to make. But we're not perfect, nobody is, and I will take shortcuts when I can sometimes too. Alright, so next we, oh, before I move on, um, McCall's number 4444, it is no longer in print. Um, and just so you know how much I love this dress and this particular pattern and how easy it is to make, I have made it three times since making this. So I have four of the same dress in different fabrics, um, and I 
misplaced my original pattern and I really wanted it so I looked it up online and I bought it again so bought the pattern twice made the dress four times it's a keeper it's definitely a keeper and it's pretty flattering um, not to get into like too much personal stuff but I um, I do have some bodily imperfections in my eyes and my bust has never been super substantial so with the help of an American Eagle push-up bra and this really cute sweetheart neckline I look like I've got a little something and the way that the skirt flares out from my hips it uh, gives the illusion that I have an hourglass figure rather than an athletic figure as we talked about in one of my first posts so if you want to find McCall's 4444 I suggest you start at Amazon um, you may also be able to contact the McCall's pattern company to see if maybe they have it as well I don't know I didn't go that far I have Amazon Prime so that's where I start with everything anyway back to Athena so you heard me talk about um, the zip front dress in the Gertie Sews Vintage Casual book uh, in one of my previous posts and how it contains piping as one of the uh, design details and it also contains a zipper up the front. So I made the dress. Um, 1930s reproductions were on sale at Joanne Fabrics for like $4 a yard. And I couldn't resist because they're normally about seven or eight dollars a yard. It's obscene now. Because when I worked at Joanne Fabrics in high school, cotton calicos were two ninety nine a yard. You had this entire wall of calico fabrics. And for those of you from the United States, you know what I'm talking about. And then the price of cotton went up. Just like everything, but whatever. So I waited for a sale, and I love 1930s prints simply because they're just so they're so cheerful. And I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who likes to dress in like really drab stuff. Yes, I wear a lot of neutrals. Yes, I wear a lot of black. Um, but it's usually just as an accent. It's never my entire outfit, or I should say it is rarely my entire outfit. Um, waiting tables cured me of wanting to wear all black all the time. So, without further ado, I have this wonderful floral print. It's a pinkish coral color and I've got white and raspberry flowers all over it. And I will zoom in a little bit. Give me just a second. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> nope, it's not working. Okay, so I will bring you to me. All right, so here you can see that there are pockets on the front of this dress. I have two pockets. And these are what we call patch pockets because they are sewn onto the fabric like a patch. Okay, so right here you can see that there is a pleat. It's stitched to a certain point and then pressed open. And then up here we have our piping. And I did not line these pockets because I didn't intend to put a whole lot of stuff in them. Um, maybe just a classroom key or some post-it notes or whatever. But you can see that I did do a seam finish on the inside, and that is done with my serger overlock machine, which we will get to at a later date. All right, also, moving up here, we do have an invisible zipper that goes up the front, and it stops approximately here. So it is very easy to get in and out of this dress. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. If you are a nursing mom, um, I dealt with this issue quite a lot when I was when I was breastfeeding my son. If you're a nursing mom, front opening garments are key. Um, you could very easily just unzip this, pop the boob out, and feed your kid. Pardon me for my technical terms. All right, over here we have sleeves with piping yet again, and you can see that there is a pleat on the sleeve similar to the pleat on the patch pocket. You can also see here that we have piping, also seam finished also top stitched right here. I'm not sure if you can see. All right. Now, the one thing that I would change about this dress, I wore this to work one time since I've made it. Um, my arms are just slightly too, slightly too snug fitting in here. Um, so what I would do is I would, I would extend this part of it down just a little bit so that it's more accommodating for my, my biceps. All right. And also here, 
we have more pockets because you know how I love pockets. So I have put two side pockets, one on either side, and then we have the two patch pockets for a total of four pockets. All right, so I do apologize for the shakiness of that video. Um, I'm going to try and work out the kinks once I sit down to edit. Um, but you can see that Athena has had a costume change. And I wanted to talk to you about this because it is actually in progress. It is not done. It still needs the zipper installed and it needs um, the hem to be done and it needs some hand stitching. And then it's finished and I need to get it done this week because I'm wearing it for my graduation um, from graduate school this coming Saturday the 19th. So I have this really great pair of um, red and white Oxford heels and I've been dying for a reason to wear them and I haven't had a dress or anything that goes with them. I got them on clearance, so I had to buy them. Um, so here we have this. Um, if you can't see it, it is a navy blue background and it has red, what appear to be roses or carnations and the foliage and the stems are white. So. It's very, um, it's very fitting for this time of year in the United States. We have uh, Memorial Day and, you know, with it being the day that we remember all of our fallen uh, soldiers, um, red, white, and blue is basically the theme from here until Labor Day in September. <laughs> So again, it's very, very fitting. Um, you can see that it does have some similar elements to what I am currently wearing. It does have the sweetheart neckline and it has the ruching with the band at the bust. Uh, it does have this cute little cutout opening here, but I will be rigging something up um, to where I can snap a piece of the outside fabric back here uh, so that I can also wear this to work. I work at a middle school um, right now. So I'm sure you can imagine that anytime I wear something like this, I have to have a jacket. My arms and shoulders have to be covered because sometimes the kids just can't handle skin. Hormones are terrible. Um, <laughs> anyway, once I get that rigged up, I will, I will be happy to show it to you. Um, a couple of things I did, let's see. Oh, before I get to that, I want to tell you, this is a Butterick pattern and it is another of, you know, the Gertie Sews series. Um, I really, really like her garments, if you can't tell. And I honestly didn't know anything about her until I was watching Inside Number 23 and Katie had so many good things to say about this Gertie Sews line of patterns. So I was like, hmm, let me go look these up. So, oh my gosh, they're the best. They're super cute. They're super easy. They're all very flattering. You don't have to be a stick figure. Even if you have, you know, substantial curves, you can still, you can still wear these and make them look really good. Like that is the beauty of 1940s and 1950s fashions. Um, whoever was designing them knew exactly what they were doing and they knew how to make a woman's body look good in the clothes that they were wearing. Um, so anyway, let me show you some of these design details here and rather than zoom in, I'm just going to pick you up and carry you. All right. So here you can see that the sleeves are slightly off the shoulder and I had cut out a size 18 on the pattern because we all know those of us that sew, we all know that sewing patterns do not use vanity sizing, they use standard sizing, which is your measurements. It's the same way that men's clothes are sized. Men's clothes. It's the same way that men's clothing is sized. Um, they have the waist measurement, they have the inseam, and that's what they go by. Also the neck measurement and all of that. Um, that's how patterns work. You will not be able to wear or cut out a size eight of a pattern if you wear a size eight at the store because the store size eight is meant to make you feel good about yourself and sewing patterns are like, Hey babe, this is reality. <laughs> so as long as you're okay with the reality check every now and then go for it. Um, but I can tell you it is, it is much better to cut something out that is too large and have to take it in rather than to cut something out that is too small and either have to finish making it and give it away to somebody um, 
or you know pick it out and try to add gussets to it and add circumference to it so that it fits you where it needs to fit you it's a pain in the butt it's not worth it just use the sizing on the pattern throw vanity sizing out the window until you're actually shopping at the store that's my advice but anyway I digress so back to the sleeve cap um, this does have elastic in it and you can see how it's gathered up a little bit there I did that because it was actually falling off of my shoulders when I tried it on so here I used blue blue thread in here sorry I'm, I'm looking at this a little bit backwards on the camera um, I did use blue thread in here just because it's what I had in the bobbin and I do have some some threads to trim but you can see where I stitched it down and you know stretched it and I stitched it back here at the other seam and you can see that I do have a pretty wild lining I'm not a fan of boring linings most of my dresses lately have just white muslin um, which is the cheapest cotton that you can possibly find um, but I really like to have bright patterned linings because it makes me feel good it's like wearing fancy underwear nobody else knows that you have it but you do and it makes you feel really good so on the back this is where the zipper will go and I love this I love this wide V that is very characteristic of late 1940s and early 1950s that uh, patterns and dress designs so this overlaps quite a bit um, because I did have to take it in quite a bit I've already taken off an inch from each side and I'll have to take off another good bit from the back but this is where the zipper will go and then down here it does have a slit so it needs to be hemmed, the slit needs to be finished, the zipper needs to be installed, and the lining actually, the lining will need to be stitched down on the inside. But that's what I've got so far, and graduation is Saturday at 10 a.m. I am graduating from Hood College with a master's degree in interdisciplinary studies of human behavior as well as a certificate in thanatology. Been working on it for two years and I am done. It feels good. So, as I said before, um, my next How Tuesday will be an instructional on how to install piping or how to attach piping, however you want to say that. And I will also show you that brown Glen plaid suiting dress that I told you about, the 1940s style that has the brown piping along the lapels and along the bodice seams. Um, Athena will be wearing that for the first segment of that particular post and I will likely be wearing this one because I really like it um, but yeah I mean that's that's about it for today uh, in the next several weeks I will be getting to show you some knitting because I don't just sew I also knit quite a lot I knit more than I sew to be honest um, because it's portable I can take it with me can't really take a sewing machine along with me but um, yeah thanks for tuning in um, I wish all of you a happy Mother's Day even though you're not going to see this until Tuesday I hope your children and your partners treat you with love and respect for the whole week and then some I will see you soon bye